Welcome back everyone, this is Anything Third Person and you're watching another episode of Max Payne 3. And if I am correct, I spent about an episode and a half per chapter. So this could be the final episode of Max Payne 3. So we just killed a bunch of guys on a subway train shootout and we're about to walk out into probably another shootout. Hello. It had taken me right into the heart of it. Becker's gimps were everywhere, so he and Bronco must be close. A smart move would have been sticking with De Silva and going straight to the hangar, but when was I ever about smart moves? I'm a dumb move guy. Hey Max, we'll drive onto the runway. No thanks, let me walk in the main entrance. I'll put a big shit-eating grin on my face and let these assholes take turns trying to kill me. That's my style, and it's too late in the day to hope for change. Boy, were they throwing numbers at this problem. But then, I'd chosen to be here. I wanted this. Was it redemption? Not really. It was pathetic desperation, and not much else. The further in I got, the more guys I saw. Becker wasn't running a police force. He was running an army. These guys were better trained and better equipped than anyone I'd seen out here. And I'd seen some mean sons of bitches. The mission was screaming suicide, but I didn't give a damn. At least I'd die being a pain in the ass. <coughs> there the bastards were, sneaking off in their rich kid's toy. I ain't got nowhere else to go, Becker! Mr. Payne, I believe you had something to say to me! Mate ele! Mate ele agora! Não! 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 Peguei ele! <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is where the game starts off? Um, let me get all the guys. Okay. Well, at least they're not surrounding me. Because that would be difficult. There sure are a lot of them. Oh, what? What? Okay, so... Not quite sure... What I need to do at this point. Well, I know that I have to kill these guys. That part I know. I'm a well-trained killer by themes of modern gaming. But the question is, what do I do after? Because I kill everybody, and I try to reach the plane, and Becker goes into a cutscene and kills me in a cutscene. Which seems to imply that I'm just supposed to stand here and do my little fight until absolutely everything is dead. Oh, who got me? That guy? Uh, shoot dodge that. Anybody else? Alright, wow, there are a lot of guys. Where do they come from? Okay, I'm gonna take some pills. Yeah, you gotta really watch for the rockets because the rocket is a one hit kill. And. And, and you have to pay attention to a stream of guys running at you. Wow, that's pretty epic. This was it. It was almost over. So I guess I'd become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Some rent-a-clown with a gun who puts holes in other bad guys. Well, that's what they had paid for, so in the end, that's what they got. Say what you want about Americans, 
but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. Here I was about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death, and I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. Just drive the fucking car! Go! We had one card left to play. Just get me close! Oh, I have right, been I'm waiting for this right. all game. Your side. Wait, oh, my right? Oh, that, that right. Come on, Go! Oh my god, this is so awesome. Wait, wait, where, what, where's the plane that we're trying to reach? All right, so I gotta compensate for the trajectory a little bit. That about sums it up. There we go. There we go. Oh, <laughs> this is so awesome. I think I've seen basically every action movie in this game. Or this game is actually every action movie I've ever seen. Oh, get that thing. That's them. <laughs> Asshole. Your career's coming. We got this. Let's get it over with. Rain grenades upon the plane. Ah! Grenades, rockets, You're whatever this win. thingy is. Enjoy a trial and a spell in prison. Let him suffer. Trust me. <laughs> you know I'll walk. You'll walk <laughs> with a lip.
So that was Max Payne 3. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me play that because I sure had a blast playing Max Payne 3. Now I have no prior knowledge of the first two games or what happened in it, but I think Max Payne 3 did a pretty good job explaining to you as we went the certain details that you needed to know. I think what I was most impressed about about Max Payne 3 was that it was such a confident project. The developers knew exactly where Max Payne 3 was heading in terms of creative direction and they knew exactly how the game should be played. And sometimes they even forced that upon the gamers. They would cut the cutscenes right as Max was running at a bunch of guys in the middle of bullet dodge. And that kind of confidence is rare nowadays. In modern titles, a lot of modern titles want players to have their own styles to the game. You know, sometimes you get stealth action hybrids, sometimes you get action adventure hybrids with elements of stealth. It, a lot of developers now want gamers to play the games their own style, and that's cool. But I think titles like these also remind you that there are certain genres that can only be played one way. Guns blazing. And I think the developers of Max Payne 3 portray that perfectly. They said, you know, you can do stealth in some other game. You can do uh, exploring in, other, uh, in, in another game. You can do ammo collecting, collectibles, whatever in other games. But here in Max Payne 3, you get a gun and you kill everything. Absolutely everything and you do it head on. You do it while you're flying in the air, you do it while you're on the ground, you do it while you're falling from 20 flights of stairs, you do it while you're being pulled up by a crane. There are a lot of ways that the Max Payne 3 crew showed how raw an action film game hybrid can be. And I say film game hybrid because like a third of this game was cinematics. But they were able to blend cinematics and the gameplay flawlessly. And I think I was just very impressed that they were able to do all of these things while maintaining a high quality game for us to enjoy. Alright, so enough about the gameplay. Let's talk about Max Payne. Max Payne, when he began this story, was an empty man. He was grieving the death of, I think it was his wife from the previous game. And he was drinking, he was kind of messed up, and he really had no direction in his life. And now, in retrospect, I think that the way that the developers wrote Max Payne in the beginning was probably one of the best examples of a way to introduce a character was broken was broken, lonely, and desperate for something in their life. It's a difficult concept to show, even on camera, but I think the Max Payne 3 crew somehow were able to incorporate that this was game graphics, but they also added elements of cinematic editing. And if you remember how the cinematics were all blurry and fuzzy and kind of looked like television screen that's being worn out, um, I'm talking about stuff like that. All of that added to the atmosphere of creating this character that was the shell of a broken hero. Now continuing on with Max Payne, I think Max Payne is also one of the more complicated action heroes that I've seen in a while. And by complicated, I mean he is consistent but sometimes difficult to predict. And I mean that in a good way. He's not an inconsistent character, but his reactions to certain situations are almost human and you can understand why Max does the things he does some of the time, and sometimes he does it just because he's Max Payne. Max Payne's approach to most problem is to walk in a straight line from point A to point B. Uh, if you need a gun in your hand, then you walk from point A to point B with a gun in your hand. If you need to fly with a gun in your hand, then you go from point A to point B with a gun in your hand. There is rarely a time when Max thinks about what he's about to do. He just does it and somehow it all works out because he's an action movie hero. And sometimes it doesn't, and when it doesn't, something else miraculously happens that saves him in the end. Now that's the common trait of an action movie, and I think Max Payne 3 incorporated enough of all the elements of you know being an action hero, being an action movie, being an action script. All of those things incorporated very very nicely and to create and support the character of Max Payne. He was also complicated to understand. On one hand, in his private life, he was drinking every day, he was smoking, he was basically running himself into the ground because he was wallowing in his own misery, grieving because he lost someone he loved. 
but on the other hand, when he started working with Paso, he was dedicated to the job. I mean, if you look at a guy like that in his private life, you must think, well, gee, he must not care about anything else. Like, if he goes to a job to protect somebody, how would you expect him to try? I mean, he looks like he's about to just, you know, slump down and then die. But it was very interesting because Max, when he was at work and when something happened where he was needed, he was there. He was always there. He gave 100% of, of his effort to, to do his job. And his job was basically saving people, protecting people from harm. And despite that Max Payne failed to protect every single person that he was assigned to protect, he was willing to die at least trying. In many ways, Max was more of a man with purpose, but no plan. And I think that worked just because he was an action hero with a lot of luck. Now because I liked Max Payne 3 so much, it was difficult to find anything that I wanted to critique. But just out of respect, I think I will mention a couple things I did notice. When Max finally decided to throw the bottle and shave his head and change into his gringo costume, I think that was more of a character shift than a logical character development. Now I'm saying this because the rest of the story just fits so well together and Max Payne was always consistent that that one moment when he decided if someone was gonna kill me, I figured I'd rather know their face or something like that. He said something like that. That made almost little sense. And by little sense, I mean it made no sense. It was almost as though the writers decided, okay, we can't keep playing these cutscenes of him drinking and falling asleep. We gotta do something else to change it. And they changed it on Max Payne instead of Max Payne changing it on us, the gamers. Now that was a little bit forced and I'm not quite sure if there was a better way to handle it but that stood out to me as a possible fix of the story that could have made the story a little bit more fluid. Another thing that stood out to me was the way the writers handled Paso. And I knew that since this was an action movie, I mean an action movie game hybrid, I knew that one of the two things had to happen. And one was that Passes were going to come with a great explanation at the very last second, save Max and have a happy ending together. Or Max is going to go after Passos and then put a bullet in him saying, you betrayed me and I trusted you, blah blah blah, that kind of action movie stuff. Now neither of those really happened and both of those kind of happened. And you know, and then this was essentially a buddy film, a buddy film, a buddy story where two guys are going through a story together through hell and back and I think it was an inappropriate decision to end Paso's role as a friend or accomplice or whatever about 75% of the way through. It would have made sense if that happened halfway through the game or at the end of the game but I think it was just a very awkward thing that the writers decided to do by having Paso's leave right before I think two chapters uh, before the end. I think that if Passos had stayed until the very end, um, like helped him catch the plane and helped him blow up Victor's plane and blazes of glory and rockets and grenades, I think it would have been more appropriate for the story and for the genre. Or it could have been that once Max decided, or once Max found out that he was betrayed, he just went after Passos and killed him. But neither of those happened, and right now, the way Paso exits the story in the storyline of Max Payne 3 feels a little bit awkward, and I think that's something the writers could have done much better, especially coming from a team so talented as the team of Max Payne 3. Well, that's about all I got for now, and once again, if you've enjoyed watching me play through Max Payne 3, please support the developers by purchasing a copy of Max Payne 3 for yourself and playing it at your own leisure. Thanks again so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next series. This is Anything Third Person signing out.